Let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at Rick Wakeman. On CVS. Hair in lovely condition and a marvellous cape, but uh, this man was also responsible for uh, kind of reinventing the way keyboards were played. Yeah. So all in all, we were very interested to see what the first record he ever bought tells us about the direction his musical life took. In 1959, I bought my very first single. It cost four shillings and eleven pence. It was on the Columbia label, and it was called Snow Coach by Russ Conway. I lived here with my mum and dad, Mildred and Cyril, and it was here really that music came into my life because my mother and father used to have a concert party called the Wakeians, which was apparently was pretty average. As my mum who used to sing, dad played the piano. So on these Sunday evenings after I was put to bed, they'd relive their Wakeians days and they'd have the old buskers books and away they would go, and I just thought this was fantastic. I used to sneak out of bed and come down, sit on the bottom step and listen and I just wanted to join in. I look at that house and I literally see music coming out of it. This was the home of the famous Mrs. Symes who taught so many of us piano. She was absolutely wonderful. And she basically taught classical piano in the, in the real proper style. And my father had always said to me, you know, make sure that you do all your classical training because that will give you the technique to be able to do whatever you want to do. The only problem was rock and roll was just coming in and that was cool. Um, Mozart wasn't. And then along came a man that made it cool for us. Russ Conway. He played piano that was, was funky for the time. And that's what we all wanted to do. And my father and mother bought me a dance set major so I could buy a record. I only had one, but it had to be Russ Conway. The other piano players who were around at the time were like Winifred Atwell. No. A bit later on came Mrs. Mills. And then there was Joe Piano Henderson. So when Russ came along, he looked like Billy Fury. He was like really cool with, with the grin and the, and the smile with the little glint and would turn around while he was playing. I thought this was wonderful. Well, this is it. This is the actual record of Snow Coach by Russ Conway, and this is 50 years old, which means that I'm a bit older than that. So, oh, this is just this is just wonderful. I was very loyal to Russ, as a lot of young kids who played the piano were. Russ to us was what Bert Whedon was to guitarists. That without you, so many people would never have started or never have done what they did. I think also about the records, well, it was an unusual piano sound, very bright, you know, quite different. He took styles from before, but brought it into sort of the modern pop idiom, which was, which was fantastic. He gave us all hope, you know, that, that, um, that it wasn't actually boring. I suppose one of the tragedies is that Russ had a very short-lived career, shall we say, at the top. He came at the same time as Skiffle came with people like Lonnie Donegan, and then, of course, the beat bands came in in the early, early 60s. And so as fast as he'd become cool, he'd become very uncool again because it was the end of the solo performer. Everybody wanted to be in a band. Russ really reached the pinnacle of his career with the piano. We didn't want to stay there, we wanted to experiment. And I went on to experiment with keyboards and played all sorts of different bands, from folk bands to I mean, like straws to prog bands like Yes. And in fact, the piano almost got kicked into touch. But I have to say, there is no doubt that I would never have been doing any of the stuff that I did had it not been for that man. Sometimes people like Russ, they can be the butt of jokes. I will not have a word said against him. Rick's here. Rick, <laughs> that, the sound of that piano is terribly sort of plink plonk to me. It just sounds like a very cheap piano Russ Conway's playing. Uh, they just used to wind all the treble up when they... When they he told me in years, years to come, they used to wind the treble up, which was fantastic. That's where all the kids then started sticking in their pianos at home, sticking the drawing pins in the end to try and get the, the jangled piano sound. It was brilliant. Obviously made a massive impression on you, but analysing his style, could you, could you mimic it? Uh, 
I find it difficult. The first thing I, I did of his was a thing called Side Saddle, which was his massive hit, which saved all us kids learning the piano, because uh, we could suddenly play something that was a bit cool and was a big hit. But uh, it was... I found it really hard to mimic exactly how he wrote his music and played. And it was only years later when I met him, I realised he'd got half a finger missing. So obviously what he was playing, every time he was meant to sort of try and play a note, he couldn't do it. So unless you wanted to tie your finger up or, you know, be oh, pretty yeah. drastic and, no. and chop it off, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was pretty difficult. Right. But he was a lovely guy. I was really, really proud to meet him. He, he did a lot for all us piano players in the, in the 50s, you know. And you kids. produced his last record. I did, I produced his last He wanted to do Side Saddle again, and I went and did it with him. And I felt really honoured. What age yeah. was he? Um, about 100 and frozen. And he, was, um, <laughs> he, he wasn't actually that old. I think he was about 70, something, 73, 70, 74. Mm -hmm. And he was the most delightful man. He, he really was. Do you still have sing-alongs in, in your household then? Sing-alongs in our yeah. household? Um, and, no, I mean, my, my parents had a, a, a concert party called the Wake Ins, as, as I mentioned in, in the film, which is great fun. But all my kids play, and at Christmas we do a, we do a concert down in Marlborough at Marlborough College, and usually three of the kids come along and, and join me and, and play. They're all great players, one's yeah. with Ozzy Osbourne. You've got Ozzy coming in soon as well. Yeah, yeah. He plays, he's been with Ozzy for five years. Another one's with the Yes Guys, who I was with now. Fantastic. They're all doing it. Fantastic. Mm. Um, you um, have collaborated with some of the greats in your time, uh, David Bowie, Cat Stevens, etc. Would yeah. you work with this man, is the question. You can get it if you oh. really <laughs> want. What's happening? Oh. You can get it if you really want. <laughs> you can get it if you really want. But you must try, try and try, try and try. You succeed at last. Yeah.